So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to add tops, the most common tops that you can add, and I'm gonna go in detail about the composite top as well as the render top, because those are some of the most important operators. So the first thing I'm gonna do is delete all of these default operators in Touch Designer right here. So I'm just gonna select those and delete those. So let's go ahead and add our first top. Let's just double click in the canvas area here, and that opens the OP Create dialog. And from the OP Create dialog, you can just click on the top category, the purple category right here. And you can see we have our top operators. Let's go ahead and add a circle top. So let's just go ahead and click on the word circle and drop that circle somewhere in the canvas area here. Just click there and you can see we added a circle. That is pretty basic, pretty self-explanatory. So now let's go ahead and just use a slightly different method to do the same thing. I'm going to press the tab key on the keyboard that opens the OP Create dialog, and we're just going to once again add a circle. So there's the circle. Let's go ahead and click on circle, and let's just click that to add that, and let's drop that in the canvas area there. So now we have circle one and circle two. Okay, now let's go to a third method to add a top into Touch Designer. Now let's right click on the output area of one of these circles, and the output area is that area with the two purple squares right there. So just go ahead and hover over that area, which is the output area. We hover over that, those purple squares. So go ahead and right click on that little area right there. And we get the OP Create dialog once again. And with the OP Create dialog open, let's just go ahead and click on this operator called Edge. So just go ahead and click on Edge. Just click on Edge and then drop edge somewhere to the right of one of your circles. And since we right clicked on the output area to add that new operator, it automatically connected a line from the circle to the edge. And you can see what that edge operator does. It finds the edges of whatever operator came before it. So that is a quick example of what tops can do. So at this point, we covered the first part of this tutorial, how to add tops. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next part of this tutorial, which is the most common types of tops. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So let's just double click in the empty canvas area to open the op create dialog. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and here we see this noise operator in the tops category. Let's go ahead and click on noise just to add that into Touch Designer. Let's place that somewhere in the empty canvas area, and you can see that that adds some random kind of visual information. And you can see it automatically added a line from our circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and hover over that line, and then I'm gonna right click on that line and click on disconnect. So I just removed that line that Touch Designer automatically added from circle. So this noise operator is really, really cool. Let's go ahead and combine the noise operator with the circle operator to make that circle a little bit more interesting. So let's just click on the empty canvas area here. Let's double click on that empty area to open the OP Create dialog. And at this point, let's go ahead and find the operator called composite. So if you see right here, we have the composite operator. Let's go ahead and click on that operator and drop that somewhere in the canvas area here. So let's just drop that in an empty area right there. At this point, we're just gonna connect a circle operator and the noise operator into the composite operator and it will combine those two operators. So let's just go ahead and click on the output area of noise right here and then drag from the output area of noise into the input area of comp just like this and drop that. And now let's go ahead and do the same thing for circle. So we're just going to click on the output area of circle, drag that and drop it into the comp operator. And you can see exactly what that does right there. It combined or composited our two op operators right here, circle and noise. And by the way, typically when I have two operators that are feeding into one operator, like in this scenario here, I try to keep things a little bit cleaner and just kind of rearrange so it's a little bit cleaner. Okay, so we checked out the circle operator, the noise operator, the edge operator, and even we got a look at the composite operator. At this point, let's add the edge operator into composite so that now we, instead of two operators, we have three operators being composited. So just click on the output area of the edge operator and drag that output into the input of the comp operator. So just go ahead and click on that output of edge and drag it and drop it into the input of comp. 
And there you can see that it is once again compositing all this stuff. And let's zoom out a little bit and take a look at this comp operator. Let's go ahead and click on the comp operator to select that operator. And if you look in the parameters of the comp operator right here, the most influential parameter of the composite operator is the operation drop down menu where it says multiply. So, what I'm going to do is click on that little drop down menu. And then instead of selecting multiply, I'm just going to click on add. And you can see now what that change does for our resulting image. I can change the order of all of the operators that are being composited by pressing these little arrow buttons here. But like I said, the most uh, significant parameter in the comp operator is the operation drop down menu. So let's go ahead and click on that again. Let's try a different operation such as divide. And this time let's click on heat. And you can see what that does in our resulting image. So the point is, when you're working with the composite operator, in my opinion, the most important parameter is the operation parameters. You can mess with all of the different operations here in this list. And what I'm going to do at this point is just change one parameter in the noise operator. So we're just going to take a quick look at changing parameters in this operator. So, so I'm going to click on the noise operator so that we can change those parameters. So I'm going to click on noise so that that operator is selected. And then now in the top right area, we can see the parameters for the noise operator. And my favorite parameter to change in the noise operator is the monochrome switch. So we can just change that switch from on to off by clicking on that. And you can see that now the output of the noise operator is color instead of monochrome. And you can see that the resulting image in our comp operator is now color instead of monochrome. In addition to changing that monochrome parameter, we can also change all of these other parameters for the noise operator. So let's go ahead and just tweak those settings a little bit. Let's go ahead and click on some of these sliders and move those left and right to change the way that this operator looks. So I'm just going to change the harmonics. And as we change the harmonics, you can see it gets blurry or more crisp. Now let's change the harmonic spread. So I'm just going to change that and you can see what that does in the resulting image. Let's mess with the harmonic gain. Let's go ahead and change that. You can see that goes from blurry to more crisp. Let's change the exponent. And you can see what that does. Let's change the amplitude. Let's change the offset. And last but not least, let's take a look at changing the period. You can see that this makes uh, more, more dots, basically, in the resulting noise. So that's just a quick look at some basic types of tops such as noise and circle and comp and even edge. Now let's just take another quick look at changing some parameters of a different operator. Let's change some parameters in the edge operator. So go ahead and click on the edge operator to select that. And now we're looking at the parameters for the edge operator. Let's go ahead and change a couple of these parameters. So let's go ahead and start out with changing the sample step parameter of the edge operator. So let's just go ahead and modify the sample step. Let's change this first value of the sample step parameter. Let's click on that, hold down the mouse, move the mouse up to the number one, and then move the mouse to the right to increase that value. And if you look closely, you can see that the size of this edge gets bigger as we increase the sample step in that X value of that parameter. So let's go ahead and change that again. Let's click and hold down on that X value of the sample step parameter. This time, let's move the mouse up to 10 and move the mouse to the right. And you can see that that is getting even bigger. Last but not least, let's change the edge color of this edge operator. So let's just click on this little white square here and let's pick a different color. So let's click on green. You can see that that made a green edge instead of white. Let's click on blue. And yeah, that's all that does. Pretty self-explanatory. But you can see that we're already getting an interesting looking image just by using a couple of operators that feed into comp. So let's just go ahead and zoom back out here. And by the way, let's go ahead and throw this in the tutorial. Let's go ahead and make this comp operator show up in the background of Touch Designer so that we can see that in a much bigger view. Let's just zoom in on this comp operator. And if you look right here, here's the display button on the comp operator. It's that little blue dot that's dark blue. Let's go ahead and click on that little blue dot. And that shows up in the background. So we can see that much more clearly. 
Now that I can see this in the background of Touch Designer, what I might do is tweak some parameters on the noise operator. So I'm just gonna click on the noise operator, and then I'm gonna mess with some of these parameters to make this a little bit more visually pleasing. So I'm just gonna zoom in on those parameters. I'm gonna change the period, and let's just slide this harmonics a little bit. We can see uh, that's uh, kind of blurry there. Maybe it's pretty cool. Let's change the harmonic spread a little bit. Now let's change the harmonic gain a little bit, see what happens there. Let's mess around with the exponent once again. Let's change this amplitude. Let's change this offset a little bit. Now let's zoom back out. And I don't know, that looks a little bit more interesting to me, I think. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna add an operator to kind of blur the edges of this uh, resulting image. So let's go ahead and double click on the canvas area here to open the OP Create dialog. And what I'm going to do is click on this blur operator because I think that will blur our image in a nice way. So click on blur and then just add that somewhere to the right of comp. And now let's connect the output of comp to the input of blur. Click on the output of comp, drag that and connect it to the input of blur. And now what we're going to do is turn off that display button for comp. So just click on that there and then turn on the display button for blur. Let's click on that. And now you can see that the resulting image is much blurrier. Okay, so now we have this resulting image, which is just some blurry color, but let's make this into something cooler by adding one more operator. And let's just go ahead and double click in the empty canvas area here to open the OP Create dialog. And now this time, let's go ahead and click on the edge operator. So let's just go ahead and click on edge. And then let's place edge somewhere to the right of blur right there is good. And this time let's go ahead and connect the output of blur to the input of edge. So we're gonna click on this little output of blur, connect that to the input of edge. So just click on the output of blur and connect it to the input of edge. And now you can see this edge operator actually looks pretty cool. So let's go ahead and turn off the display button of blur and let's turn on the display button of edge. So turn off blur, and turn on edge. And now in the background of Touch Designer, you can see we have a pretty cool looking image starting to come out here. Now that we have this edge operator here and a resulting image that's starting to look pretty cool, what I would do is mess with the parameters of this new edge operator to see if we can make this image look even cooler. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this edge operator's parameters here. And what I'm gonna do is just start messing with these parameters. So, so for example, we can turn on this switch that says comp over input. And you can see that that takes the input, which is blur, and it composites it over the, uh, the edge operator. So now we have a combination of the color and the edge. So we can keep that setting if we want, or we can turn that back off. Now we can take a look at changing the strength parameters. So we can just slide this dial up or down and we can see that that edge becomes even stronger. And we can mess with the sample step parameter as well. So let's go ahead and click on the Y value of the sample step parameter and slide the mouse up to one. We're holding down the mouse button. And now let's move the mouse to the right to increase this value. And you can see that increases the amount of edge in the Y direction. Now, if we want, we can do the same for the X direction of the sample step parameter. We can click on that X value, hold down the mouse, move the mouse up to the number one and move the mouse to the right to increase this value in the X direction. Last but not least, we can change the edge color of this edge operator just by clicking on this white square here. And then we can just click on a color to change the color of this. So now if we zoom out, we can see that now we have kind of a green fuzzy blob shape. And once again, we can turn on this switch that says comp over input just to see what that looks like now. So there we have a shape, uh, an image starting to uh, come out of our project. Okay, so we have our shape here, but I actually don't like the color of this edge. So I'm gonna change this edge color back from green to kind of a light blue turquoise color. So I'm just gonna click on this edge color here. And then I'm gonna change that to a light bluish color, like an electric blue kind of. Okay, so let's zoom out. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is add some movement to our project. So what I'm gonna do is go to the noise operator. So I'm just gonna click on that noise operator to select that. And then in the parameters for our noise operator, 
you see different tabs. We have the noise tab, we have the transform tab. What we want to do is click on the transform tab. So that is selected. And then in the transform tab, you can see that there is a parameter named translate. What I'm gonna do here is double click in the X value of the translate parameter. So just double click that. And then we're going to type in an expression to make this parameter move dynamically. And the expression that we're going to type in is ABS in lowercase, and then capital T with time, and then put a period or a dot, and then the word seconds. So just to go over that again, it's abs time dot seconds with a capital T, abs time dot seconds. And then I'm going to press enter. And you can see that that makes movement in this parameter. But that movement is too fast, so I'm going to modify that parameter by once again double clicking in this area here. And then it automatically opens these three little parameters or kind of sub parameters TX, TY, TZ. And I'm going to click in the area where it has that expression we typed in abs time dot seconds. So I'm just going to click the mouse at the end of that word there. And then I'm going to put divided by 10. So that that is much lower it's a much slower speed so as you can see that made the movement much slower in touch designer and now you can see that our shape looks like it's kind of rotating as if it were a globe or something so that achieves movement in our project and one more thing that i want to do is add another dynamic parameter that changes the size of the sphere or the circle that we're working with here so that that kind of grows and shrinks a little bit so at this point, I'm going to select the circle operator. So I'm just gonna move our project a little bit here. So I'm just gonna click on this circle operator to select the circle operator. Then I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna look at the parameters for the circle operator. We're basically gonna do something similar here to the circle. At this point, we're just gonna add a new operator that's gonna feed a dynamic parameter into the radius of the circle to make that grow and shrink. So what I'm gonna do is double click on the empty canvas area to open the OP Create dialog. And once we are in the OP Create dialog, I'm going to click on the chop category, the green category there. So in the chop category, I'm gonna go down and find the LFO operator, the low frequency oscillator operator. And I'm just gonna click on LFO and then drop LFO somewhere near the circle. And you can see that this LFO operator is dynamically creating a number that is oscillating from one to negative one, basically. So I'm gonna zoom out, and this oscillator is going a little bit too fast for what I want, so I'm just gonna immediately change the frequency parameter of this LFO. So that's at one, I'm gonna grab this little slider here, and then move that down to something like 0.2, and now you can see that this oscillator is oscillating at a much, slower frequency, which is more appropriate for what I want. And you know what, I'm actually gonna decrease this a little bit more so that it's even slower. So I'm gonna reduce that to something closer to 0.1. So 0.09 is good enough, that's pretty slow. And now we are going to basically drop this oscillator into the radius parameter of the circle, and it's easier than it sounds. What we're gonna do first is click on the viewer active button for the LFO operator. So I'm just gonna click on that viewer active button in the bottom right hand corner of the LFO operator. And now that the viewer active button is on, what we're gonna do is zoom out. We're going to select the circle operator. So just click on the circle operator so that the border is green. And now what we wanna do is hover over the LFO operator so that the cursor now has that kind of triangle shape to it. We're gonna click on that LFO operator, hold down the mouse, and drag that onto the radius parameter of the circle because our circle is currently selected. So we should be seeing this radius parameter of the circle. So I am just going to drop the LFO operator onto the word radius, and that way it will change all three parameters or all three values of this parameter instead of just dropping it onto X, Y, or Z. I'm going to drop it onto the word radius, and that should apply the LFO to all three values of this parameter. So I'm just gonna drop LFO onto the word radius, and then I'm going to click on export chop. So just click on export chop, and now you can see that the radius of this circle is changing dynamically. But 
the radius of our second circle is not being changed. So I'm going to do the same thing we just did with the first circle and our LFO operator. I'm gonna do that to our second circle as well. So at this point, I'm going to select our second circle right here. So just click on that second circle to select that operator. And then what you wanna do in the parameters of this second circle is make sure the circle tab is selected. And then we just want to click and drag this LFO operator and drop that onto the word radius of our second circle. So just drop that onto the word radius and then click on export chop. And now both of our circles are changing at the same exact frequency. And those circles are being changed to a little bit too large of a radius. So what I'm gonna do to change that is change some parameters of the LFO operator. So let's go ahead and turn off the viewer active button on the LFO operator. So just click on that viewer active button in the bottom right corner of LFO. Now the viewer active button is turned off. Now I'm going to click on the LFO operator to select the LFO operator. And we're just gonna take a look at the parameters for the LFO operator now. So let's zoom in on that. And the way we can change the maximum and minimum values that this LFO operator outputs is by changing the amplitude parameter. So I'm going to just drag this slider for the amplitude parameter down till it's maybe, I don't know, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, whatever doesn't go outside the bounds of our project area here. So it looks like 0 0.33 looks like a pretty good number for this. And in addition to that, I want to make it so that our sphere stops shrinking at a certain value so that that doesn't go down to zero, basically. So what I'm going to do is go back to our LFO parameters, and I'm going to change the offset to about 0 0.2 or something, maybe half of our 0 0.3. So 0 0.15 seems pretty good, I think. And then what we can do is change the type of oscillator from sine. So we can click on this drop down menu that says sine and change that to Gaussian, then it'll stop oscillating down to negative values and it will only stay in the positive values, basically. So we change that to Gaussian and you can see that now that doesn't go down to negative values and instead that stops at 0 0.15, which is our offset, and then it's going to go up to about 0 0.48 because 0 0.15 and 0 0.33, if you add those together, you should get 0.48. So basically that means that this Gaussian oscillator is uh, going from a minimum value of 0.15 to a maximum value of 0.48. And it looks like that might be almost a little bit too big because it's almost touching the bounds of our project area. So I'm going to change the amplitude down just a little bit from 0.33 to like 0.29. Maybe that'll be a little bit more comfortable, you might say. So now our shape is oscillating and it, the surface of that shape is moving. And in my opinion, that's a much more interesting production than just a static circle. So I know this chop, this green operator is not in the, uh, is kind of out of the scope of tops, but I think this is essential to add into your project of tops to make your tops project much more interesting. And in addition, if you want to continue to reuse this LFO operator, you could use this in the parameters for some of your tops as well. So let's do a quick example of that. So what I'm gonna do is click on the noise operator so that that is selected. And now what I'm gonna do is click on the viewer active button of our LFO so that we can drag and drop that onto a parameter of our noise operator. So just click on the viewer active button of the LFO. And then once again, make sure your noise operator is selected with the green border around it like that. And then in the parameters of our noise operator, what I'm gonna do is just look through these and look to see what values are close to what we already have coming out of the LFO. And once again, the out output of that LFO is between 0 0.15 and about 0 0.4 something. So if I look in the parameters of our noise operator, you can see the offset parameter is at about 0 0.4. So I, can, I think that's a pretty good candidate for us to replace this static value with a dynamic value that's coming from our LFO operator. So since our viewer active button is turned on for the LFO, we can just click on our LFO operator and drag that 
and drop that onto the offset parameter of our noise operator. So just drop the LFO operator onto the offset parameter of our noise operator, and then click on export chop. And now you can see that that offset parameter is changing with the LFO basically. So that just gives more of a dynamic feel to our project. So at this point, what I would do personally is just mess around with some different parameters. I might start messing around with the parameters of the noise operator. For example, you could turn on the monochrome switch and see what happens there. So you can just press on for monochrome. And you can see that takes away most of the color, but we still have some kind of light turquoise and light green colors in there. So one quick side note is that this project is dynamic, so it's moving constantly. But if you wanted to stop the project, you could press the space bar or you could press uh, the pause button at the bottom of the screen here to pause the movement of this. So you can press pause and that just pauses the movement of it. Or you can press the space bar. And another side note, if you want to take a screenshot or export the image of what is currently on the screen, that's really easy to do. So let's do that first. I'll go ahead and pause this image by pressing the space bar. And then I'm going to click on an operator that we want to export the image from, such as the last operator in our project, which is this Edge 2 operator right here. So I'm just going to click on the Edge 2 operator so that that's selected. Then I'm going to right click on that operator. And then I'm just going to click on Save Image. So right click on this Edge 2 operator and click Save Image. Then you can just save this image by pressing the Save button here. And then once I found that saved image on my hard drive, I opened that image and you can see that that is this image right here. So that's a cool way that you can export images from your projects and post them to social media or whatever you want to do. And in addition to exporting images of your projects, you could save a video of your project. So let's do that really quickly. Let's go ahead and click on the File button. And if you click on the File menu in the top of Touch Designer, then just click on Export Movie. And then you get this Export Movie dialog right here. And what you want to do now is drag the operator that you want to export from. You want to click on that operator, such as this Edge 2 operator right here. You want to click on that and drag that onto this little area that says top video. So just drop that onto the area that says top video and it automatically types in the location or path name of the operator that you want to export from. And then you can see a preview right here. And all you wanna do is press the start button at the bottom of the screen here, and then it will render about 300 frames of this video and you can change some of the parameters in here if you want. Um, I like to keep it simple by leaving the parameters how they are until I absolutely need to change them. And when, if I wanna change them, I might wanna change an end frame to have a longer or shorter exported video. But yeah, anyway, that start button there will start rendering the video. But I think that's about it for this Ops tutorial. I hope this helped you. Uh, if it was confusing, let me know in the comments below. If it was helpful for you, then please definitely leave a comment below to let me know that I actually did something right with this video. So I hope you have some fun with tops. Once again, that's the most important thing about Touch Designer is to have fun while you're doing it. So keep it simple, have fun, and enjoy doing it.